welcome back to the Blind Symmetry Lore Painting channel. In this video, I would like to demonstrate how I make 3D half shell stencils for some of my lures. So what I'll do is I'll set up another camera angle and we'll get started. Okay, our burner's coming up to temperature. First method I want to show you is using BBs or ball bearings. You want to take your lure and bury it to the seam down the middle or to the hook eyes. So that feels like she's towards the middle. Then you want to take your frame with your material attached Hold it over the burner, maybe 10 inches. <coughs> you want to let this plastic slowly warm up. All right, she's a little bit warm now, so we'll, we'll drop her down a little bit. <coughs> I'm probably about seven, eight inches now. And I'm going to wait until I see just a little bit of opaque showing. I'm sorry. When this opaque disappears, when it starts getting transparent, is what I want to see before I lower it again. Okay, I'm starting to see a little bit of transparent. All right, so I dropped her down about another inch. Right now, probably four and a half, five inches off the burner. And as soon as that goes transparent, I want to turn the vacuum on and make the stencil. I'm going to try to get that whole piece transparent. All right, that's good enough for my liking. Vacuum on. Now what you can do is when you drop your uh, your frame and your material material over your bait, you can take a, a damp rag and just drop on here to help speed up the process. Okay, we have our clips removed from our frame. She's a perfect fit. I really don't use the BB method because you can't butt two pieces up together perfectly. So this is, use the BB method if you want to do one side at a time. And we'll go on to our next method. Okay, on to our next method. Okay, what we'll do is we'll take our half pieces I showed you in the beginning. And we'll put this sticky stuff on here to hold it in place and hold it down tight. Sticky stuff I'm using is made by Loctite and it's called Funtac. I forgot about the burner. All right, we got that burner going. 
give that a second to heat up. Okay, our burner's up to temp. Once again, we'll hold our material maybe 10, 11 inches up just to let it come up to temperature. We don't wanna heat it too fast. All right, I'll drop her down to about eight inches. And as soon as I see that transparency going, I'll drop her down a little further to about four and a half, five inches. I see some transparency starting. About four and a half, five inches above the burner. Go lay down, Luna. Looking good. I'll give her another couple seconds here. All right, that's pretty decent. Here we go. And I forgot my rag with water on there, so that's why I ran that vacuum a little longer. Okay, we'll get these clips taken off, and we'll pop them out, and we'll cut them to shape. Okay, before we take that frame off, we'll talk about why you may want to get you a thermoforming box or build you a thermoforming box. I use some of these stencils once in a while. 3D stencils. It's a half shell. This is some type of crawl pattern. I don't know what it's called. But these things are $25 a piece. And you can start this little setup here for less than $25. Uh, this thermoforming box was made from scrap I had in the, the garage. Uh, so that didn't cost me anything. That's why I don't throw a lot of scrap wood away. This burner cost me $13 at Walmart. Uh, the frame was also scrap, so that didn't cost me anything. But this angle aluminum around the edges, I got a 96 inch piece for seven bucks, or maybe eight bucks. So I got 20, 21 dollars in this whole setup. We had a shop back, so we're not going to count that. 13, 7, or 8. And uh, you can save some money and you can make a whole bunch of stencil blanks if you want. All right, what we'll do is we'll pop this off. Bigger cut out for you real quick. And we'll talk about this material here in a second. And we'll also how how we'll talk about how you can make your patterns. Let's cut out. We got our right and our left. Let's 
So we'll stick a whole lure in there. Okay, we have the whole lure in there. She's a great fit. Okay, we'll pull this away from the camera. Well, I might be able to do it. I don't want to get all in the shot. Okay, there you have her. So you can take your little clips, clip them on. Oh, let me get the other bait. Okay, another thing I want to say. You may have tape on your bait when you're uh, painting it. So what you want to do is you want to cut the very first eighth inch off of this bill. That way you, you can fold your tape over and the long parts can stick out the front. Now I'll tell you how you can make your uh, patterns. What we have here is just something I drew, a, it's a S crank stencil I drew a uh, perch pattern on. So you draw your perch pattern on your lure. Okay, where's my other half go? And you put a bunch of clips around the edge, and you take your X-Acto knife and uh, slowly score the perch pattern out, or whatever pattern you have on here. So you want to make sure you take a little more time than I did at making your pattern on your uh, blank. Get that all cut out, and you got a fairly cheap, reusable stencil. Uh, you can't use solvents on this, though. Just acrylic paints. And I'll, I'll get this cleaned up and we'll talk about these here. There's a certain way you have to get these cut down. All right. Pop this fun tack off. Now to make these sections, you have to sacrifice two lures. What I did is I took a belt sander and I ground it down. I just sat it on the belt sander, moved it around a little bit until I got past the hook eyes. Once you get to the hook eyes, you have to remove the hook eyes, you have to remove the bearing, and then you have a little indentation on your lure where the hook eyes were. You want to grind past those hook eyes a little bit, or just past them, on both pieces. That way, when you make your stencil, or your blank, your stencil blank, you're, uh, you're missing a center section. That missing center section allows the material to be formed into a smaller piece. That way, when you put your half shells on, you have a little gap in between them. And then when you put your clips on, it pulls the stencil tight. If you leave the hook eye indentations, your pieces will butt up, but they'll be puffed up on your lure. So when you make your uh, pattern and then you airbrush into it, you'll get overspray shooting underneath them. So you can do it with a Dremel, but it might not be as clean as a belt sander. And the material we use today is a HDPE, also known as high density polyethylene. It's the same stuff that a milk jug is made from. I picked this material up in a, I think it's, uh, it's a 22 by 28 sheet. I got it at Michael's and it is on the poster board rack. I believe it was 
a dollar eighty nine. It's not that much, and you get a few sheets out of one uh, one sheet. Okay, now that you know how to make a bunch of stencil blanks, and after you have a whole bunch of them made up, I'm going to talk to you about how you can uh, cut your patterns in. I showed you this lure while making the stencil blanks. Uh, I start on a whole lure like this so I can get everything symmetrical. I can turn the bait over and see what it looks like on each side, see if I got everything lined up. It just helps. So I do it that way. <clears throat> and you can also see it through your, your stencil blank. You could actually trace this onto your stencil blank and cut it out. Or you can just go ahead and cut it out. You'll probably scratch up your lure, but it's a sacrificial lure, so we don't care about that. 75, 80 cent. Maybe a dollar. <clears throat> so you know that way. And another way you can do it. Is with a wood burning tool. Now you can take this wood burning tool. After you have a pattern drawn up. You take this wood burning tool and you go from the inside of the stencil out. Just trace your your uh, pattern. <coughs> you want to go from the inside out because you press uh, some excess plastic on the outside of the uh, stencil. If you go outside in, you'll have a buildup of plastic here that will hold your uh, stencil off of your lure and it'll allow overspray to get underneath. <clears throat> overspray isn't bad, but it isn't good. And that's that way. Or you can take your half shell buck, not your half shell buck, your uh, half lure buck and stick it into your half shell and lay this flat on a table and then cut it out that way. Or you have the best of both worlds here and uh, some of these wood burner kits come with the exacto knife blade so you can heat that blade up and get a silky smooth cut straight line cuts anyway you want to use that uh, pointy tip for jagged edges and stuff like that <clears throat> so right there once you can make all your stencil blanks it'll save you a ton of money these stencil blanks here I mean these stencils here are for one particular lure and these stencils I have are for the S crank style bait you can get them in different different model baits but these bad boys are $25 a piece <coughs> and you can make that uh, the uh, box without a scrap so that'll be free you buy your burner you buy your wood burner and you buy your uh, your uh, angle aluminum for your uh, frame. So for the price of one of these, you can go ahead and get all the stuff you need to make all these stencil blanks and create your own patterns. <clears throat>